Hello, I'm Bino. I'm an arborist and a tree climber specialist. What I like to do on my channel is share tree climbing tips with beginners and experts. What we're doing today is I had a comment on how do the friction hitches work while you're descending. So what we're gonna do today is use a few different friction hitches. We'll go up a little bit and we'll descend with it and talk about what's happening. All right, let's get to it. The first hitch that we're gonna go over is the Blake's. Blake's has been around for years and it's a very good hitch to use. So with the Blake's, you've got four wraps, one, two, three, four. The tail goes around the bridge of it and it comes back through to this end. You gotta make a stop or not. So I already got some pressure on it. When, when you put your body weight, you can see that if you start, it's kind of like level, but now once you put your body weight, you can see how it constricts the rope. So those are your brakes. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go up a few feet and then I'll, I'll descend. Let me see. Throw my ascender in just because I want to make it a little easier. Okay, so about right here where I'll do my descent. So you can see that I got my full body weight and now there's a high point and a low point. So it's constricting, those are my brakes. What I wanna do to descend is I'll grab my hitch up here on top and then I'll start to pull. The more pressure you put on the high point, it will start to descend. There you go. So, and that's, that's basically it when it comes to the Blake's. Having this constriction point, when you put your body weight on it, it causes these wraps to grip the rope and that's your brake. To reduce, you know, to release the brake, grab the high point. And yeah, I mean, it's not, and what you don't really wanna do is grab the whole hitch if, if you have gloves. Or if you have a hand, you don't wanna have your hand touching the rope because it's gonna run. A good way to do it, grab the high point, and now you pull down on the high point, and it will help you descend on this hitch. Here, I've tied the taut line hitch. Now with the taut line hitch, it's the same. It has four wraps, one, two, three, four. Um, the difference is that the tail end goes through the top, and the other bridge end goes through the middle, and it has a cross. It's, it's almost like it looks a, kind of like a glorified clove hitch. So with this, it'll do the same kind of thing. When you put your body weight, now it's, it, it breaks by the coils gripping the rope. And I don't know if you could see this, you could see the high points on this side. So it will work the same way as the Blake's when you pull it. So I'll go up a few feet and then we'll watch it descend. So on my deal here. All right. All right. I'm probably about right, right here. All right. Take off the uh, ascender. So now you see how it spreads and the brake, it's breaking. And then now the high point is here. So for me to descend, I, like I said, I don't want to grab the whole rope and have my hand near that running end. But what I'll do is I'll grab a couple fingers and I'll pull that a high point back toward me. So when I do that, now it will descend. So that's how the taut line works. Definitely have to have a stopper because with the taut line, when you just, you know, you ascend this has a tendency to run on you this stopper prevents that so your bridge length will stay the size you want providing you have that stopper but if you don't if you put your stopper further this bridge could be further away and maybe if you have a lot of tail it could be a way far away from you so that's how you would descend with the taut line and that's what it looks like. The first two hitches that we use, they're more of a traditional system, maybe you'd use with like a split tail. Now the one that I have right now 
is a distal and you use it with a pressic cord. This one's a 24 inch pressic cord. So the distal looks a lot like a taut line hitch. If you look at it, it has a cross, but instead, and it has four turns or wraps. One leg goes out this side and one leg goes out the other side. The taut line has two wraps below and two above, but the distal will only have one wrap on the bottom. Now, if you got a longer cord, instead of um, four wraps, you could probably do five. So on this, it works the same way where when you put your body weight, now you can see how it spans out, the wraps are choking the rope, and then you got the high point back here. So that's, that's the part where when you want to descend, you grab it and you pull down toward you. So that's the makeup of that. So right now I'll go up a few feet and we'll descend. Maybe I'll just go up. Okay. About right here. Okay, so now how they span, they're all spanning and now I don't want to grab the whole hitch because if I have gloves on, definitely it'll get stuck underneath. So what you want to do is get a couple of fingers, start pulling toward you. The harder you pull, the faster the hitch will move. And there you go. Back down to the ground to descend up. Now I put my body weight back on it. You can see how it constricts the rope. All right, off to the next one. Here I've tied the Michoacan. The way this one's tied, it has four wraps. And um, like even if you had a longer cord, you could be five wraps. The longer the cord, you want to make sure you maybe more than just four. This one's a 24. Now the way this one works, it has the one, two, three, and the bottom is considered the wrap. You'll have one leg that goes out the front and one leg that goes out the back. So that's the break. So it constricts the rope this way, not just the three on top. So once you put your weight on it, you see how it spans out. So these three grip the rope. Now these two, the one in the front and the one in the back, now you put your weight so the bottom even constricts it more. And so even what's pretty cool about this one is that when you start to advance, it, the pulley will release on both sides and it makes it a lot easier to pull upward. So I'll go up and, oh, and I forgot to tell you. So now you see how the high point is here, right? You'll just want to grab the top. And when you pull that, you could kind of even twist it instead of just yanking, it will make your line start to descend. So I'll go up a few feet and show you a view of that. So. There we go. Okay, so about right here. So you can see how it's spanning the high points here. Now I'm gonna grab it. It can run pretty fair. Now the faster you pull it to you or open that line, it'll go fast, which you really don't want. There we go. So you see how that worked? It's a real good hitch. Here I've tied this waybish. Now for me, when I use a swaybish, if I use a 24 inch cord, it really gets stuck. And it's not really, even going upward when I ascend, it's, it sucks and when I descend, it really gets sticky. So I prefer if I'm using the swaybish to use a 30 inch cord. Now, if I'm gonna use a 30 inch cord though, I'll make five wraps. So one, two, three, four, five. Now on the swaybish, both tails go around this, or under, or through this, like bridge, I would say. It's not really a bridge, but you know, you, you wrap upward and they'll go both of them through here, almost like a pressic, but you have the two bottom wraps are gonna come through the bottom and they'll connect to you. So on, on this, when you put your weight on it, you could see the high point. So that's the part where it's breaking and all of them together make the break. They constrict on the rope when you put your body on it. And to bring it down, you bring the high point. Okay, so I'll go up a couple feet and we'll see how that works on the descent. Here we go. All right, release, it's holding me. Same kind of thing, I don't wanna grab the whole hitch because I, this running part could burn my finger or get my gloves. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna pull down a little bit on the high point. Remember, the harder you pull, the faster you go. 
So you want to be controlled and come down slowly. There we go. All righty. And then the ascension part is like that. So that's the Schwabish. Now here I've tied the canute. It's a 30 inch pressic cord. Now with this, we'll have four wraps on top, one, two, three, four. And then the bottom part of the canute is the, um, the breaking part. And that's considered the fifth wrap because it's a 30 inch cord. So I'll move up a little. Now, once I put my weight on it, you can see how it spreads out. These three up here are these four. This, this one's here considered the four. It's gripping the line that way. But then this part that crosses over here, it also pinches the rope here. So those are your brakes. Also, all that in, in total. So now I'll go up a couple of feet and then we'll see how it breaks on the way down. Or actually we'll descend with it. There we go. All righty. So you see how it separates? It's gripping the high points over here. So, you know, you gotta be careful too because the rope will go through here. So, but the best thing to do is to grab it at the high point, couple fingers, pull it toward you. And that's how you'll descend with this hitch all the way back down to the ground. And what's pretty nice is the way the Canute set up, the same thing, almost like a Mitchell Con where when you pull up on it, if you have a pulley, it releases the bottom brake. It makes it a little bit easier to ascend up. And there you have the canoe. The next hitch that I've tied is the VT, the Val de Tante Tress. It's still a 30 inch cord. On this one though, I've tied five wraps on the top, one, two, three, four, five, and then a couple of braids. Now, you know, your, your body style, maybe the cords you use and the rope you use, you might have less wraps than what I do. Um, but for me, I need five on top and about two braids on the bottom. So when you put your weight on it, it will do the same thing where these grip, you got your high point. That's where you will get, you know, grab your hitch and to bring yourself down. These also, these braids will help to slow down your running end of your rope. So let's see how it works when I go up a little and, and then tend my line. Or, I mean, sorry, I descend. All right. Okay. All right. Now I set back, I got my whole body weight on there. Same thing where you don't wanna just grab your hitch. For me, it's always been better to go to the high point and then pull that down. And remember that it, on any of these, the more you pull it toward you, the faster it will go. And fast isn't always the best because you don't want to burn your line. So that's how that works. Here's the braking section. The, the grip constricts the rope. And these um, braids, they kind of reduce or they put friction on a rope to slow it down. So there you have it, the VT. Well, there you have it. A few different types of friction hitches, some, some of the more traditional, and then friction hitches with press cords. So you can see that the knots constrict the rope when you apply your body weight. There's usually always a high point on the line when you're gonna descend. Once you grab that high point and you pull it toward you, or if you level the, uh, the wraps flat, well then you can start to descend. Now descending, it's important that you don't want to descend too fast because a lot of ropes could melt. I know nowadays they have a lot of cords that are heat resistant and may not melt, but the rope itself could get glazed and, and that's something you really wouldn't want to do to your line. Um, so having control when you do it is one of your best options. Um, you see how the brakes work with the wraps and that uh, type of situation. Hope this has been helpful to you guys. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like what we do. And by all means, share our videos. Take care. We'll see you next time.